In a world where so much divides us, war, nationality, colour, gender, what can bring us together? When we look for what we have in common rather than what makes us different, can we affect change and can we change the world? Well, I'm going to tell you a story tonight of two opposite sides of society coming together, affecting change that has impacted every single one of us. And let's look at the lessons we can learn for today. It's 1984 and the National Union of Mine Workers has called an all-out strike. The UK government, led by Margaret Thatcher, is threatening the closure of mining pits across the country. Ten years previously, in 1974, striking miners brought down a Conservative government and this government has no intention of going the same way. They've been stockpiling reserves of coal. They're reducing the benefits that are being given out to striking miners' families, and they are bussing in police across the country to Wales and to other mining communities to keep law and order. But the miners are angry. They are hungry. Their communities are being decimated, and they are feeling the full force of the law bearing down on their communities daily. Every night on the news, we see deprivation and violence being played out. Meanwhile, in London, at the 1984 Gay Pride March, two friends, Mark Ashton and Mike Jackson, decide to rattle some buckets and raise funds for striking Welsh miners. They're surprised at the generosity of the crowd, and together they co-found lesbian and gay support the miners. They could have no idea that this group would go on to have a profound effect on the lives of LGBTQ plus people living in the United Kingdom to this day. You might think it an odd combination, urban LGBTQ plus community, and Welsh miners. And on face value, it does look odd. However, let's dig a little bit deeper. Mike has said that initially, many of those who gave money to the cause were from mining communities themselves. They may have come to London to come out and explore their sexuality, but they still had deep affection for back home. But let's dig even deeper. Both communities felt oppressed. Both communities felt victimized by the police and both communities were vilified daily in the press. Despite sex between consenting males over 21 being decriminalized in 1967, prosecutions and arrests were actually on the increase. You could literally be arrested for kissing your same-sex partner in public. The law was vague and oppressive, and that act was seen as an incitement to riot. People would literally riot if they saw two men or two women kissing in public, or that's what the law said. And there was no protection. You could lose your job or you could lose your home simply for being gay. This shared experience of oppression brought the LGBTQ plus community and the miners together. Now, you may have seen the film Pride, and you may think this is a story of overcoming prejudice, but it isn't. Lesbian and gay support the miners were welcomed in the valleys. Rather than look for what made them different, both groups looked at what they had in common and what could unite them. And that can be the lesson for all of us to not focus on our differences, but instead to focus on what we have in common, what unites us, what binds us, what can bring us together. Because if we come together, then change can happen. And change did happen. Now, the miners' strike was unsuccessful. The miners returned to work and many of the pits closed and those communities were left decimated. However, the bonds between the LGBTQ plus community and the miners remain strong. In 1986, a motion was tabled at the Labour Party convention to enshrine lesbian and gay rights in the party's constitution. Now, this had been tabled before, but had been unsuccessful. This time, it was successful. 
due in no small part to the support from the National Union of Mine Workers. The other unions fell into line behind the National Union of Mine Workers as a mark of respect for the miners' struggle. This change in the constitution of the Labour Party paved the way ultimately for the Civil Partnership Act and for the Same-Sex Marriage Act. So we can learn from this story. When opposites come together, and instead of looking what makes them different, they focus on what unites them, what is the common cause, and what do they have in common. My goodness, you can change the world.